Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to I Think 2022. And today we are talking about India's corporate travel rebuild. I am Naomi Dias. I head key account management for FCM India. And I'm your moderator for today's discussion. I'm super pleased to have a group of esteemed panelists with me today and looking forward to a really exciting and en engaging discussion. So firstly, to introduce um, Mr. Anup Taneja, who is Regional Director, Global Sales, India and Subcontinent for Marriott Hotels. Uh, he's part, a key member of the Marriott Global Sales Organization, and he began his career with Marriott in 2011 and took over his current role in 2017. We next have Mr. Sanjay Kumar, Chief Strategy and Revenue Officer, Indigo. He has been a part of the aviation industry for over 25 years, and he's also worked with airlines such as SpiceJet and Air Sahara. We then have Mr. Rakesh Bansal, CEO of Amadeus India, a pioneer in the travel tech industry. And uh, he's also a qualified computer engineer who has mentored and led his teams to great successes in India. Our next panelist is Mr. Gaurav Luthra, COO, FCM India. Gaurav's experience spans over 20 years with the Flight Center Travel Group, uh, driving product innovation, supply relation. And he's also launched Corporate Traveler, which is the SME uh, brand proposition for corporate travel in India. And lastly, but certainly not the least, we have Rakshit Desai, MD Flight Center Travel Group. He's been looking after the India interests of Flight Center uh, for about the last eight years. And prior to this, he's helped scale, scale up businesses for the Thomas Cook Group in UK, Canada, and India. So it's great to have all of you here. And you know, exactly two years to what we hope we have put everything behind us and looking forward uh, to a new future. We are all saying yes, uh, as we say, to new rules. And we may all agree on one thing, right? Everything that we knew earlier has now changed. Everything has changed. The way we think about our business, the way we plan for the future. And the, the travel industry in itself seems ready to absorb anything that we wish to throw at it, right? So this is a collective feeling among, you know, a lot of people that I've spoken with. And from empty airports to now, we have this massive influx of this highly demanding business traveler in India. And, uh, you know, India leading the market recovery for Asia as a region uh, where travel has almost reached pre COVID levels. So the first question, you know, Gaurav, to you to open the floor, uh, you know, what, what do you think are the reasons for such a swift recovery uh, that we are witnessing? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for being here as a great uh, panelist here. Um, Naomi, picking up the question, recovery, I I would say recovery means very different to, uh, to different uh, companies. Uh, you know, what I mean to say is basically um, different organizations, different industry saw different uh, phases of recovery uh, in the Indian market or uh, in the global market uh, for example, some some industries uh, did not see a did not see us did not see going down at all, uh, like the pharma and and the um, essential services industries. were even during the pandemic, were uh, absolutely doing fine, and some industries were absolutely uh, um, you know gone down. Um, in, industries like um, industries like uh, auto or capital goods or uh, Manufacturing saw a comeback after the second wave or the second lockdown that was opened uh, in India. And industries like ours, for example, you know, hotel or travel or aviation has just about started seeing uh, some bit of recovery. I mean, thankfully, the airports and the hotels are a buzz. Uh, uh, the buffets are well laid out in the hotels now. You know, it's a sight to see. Um, it's a very welcoming sight to see. Um, uh, there is light at the end of the end of the tunnel. I think we should. Uh, uh, previously, we saw a bit of recovery momentum sometime last year from September, October onwards. But then we suddenly saw a scare of a third wave uh, and and you know onset of holidays for December. Uh, you know Christmas holidays and a couple of other holidays uh, set in, which made a bit of slowdown for uh, our industry. Um, the, the the new estimates were February and March would look up uh, to be much better. And here uh, here we are. Uh, you know, we've seen a fantastic upsurge in the month of March. I would say uh, March has taken everybody by surprise, you know, all the hoteliers. 
the hotel companies, the the aviation companies, and even for travel companies, you've seen a massive surge coming back. Uh, um, uh, what are the reasons? Uh, you know, I would I I would largely attribute the, the biggest reason as the India's uh, vaccination drive. Uh, you know, as we speak today, more than more than a billion people are uh, vaccinated for first dose. Almost like. Uh, Almost like uh, 850, 870 odd million people are vaccinated with double dose, and 25, 30 million odd people are already vaccinated with third dose, which is a booster. You know, which started about two weeks, th- three weeks ago. Uh, you know, so vaccination is definitely a big pivot to the to the uh, you know fantastic part that we that we've seen as a comeback. Uh, the I think the other uh, uh, indicating factors are uh, you know. Um, the, uh, the digital payment ecosystems and the work from home you know most of the corporate companies or the uh, or the entrepreneurs have uh, started to realize uh, uh, that they need to they need to get out and fetch for uh, business you know there has to there has to be there has to be that fourth start uh, the lockdowns are not helping uh, anybody you know uh, so um, companies have conditioned themselves you know some have adopted to work from home some have adopted to hybrid Hybrid models, uh, some are adopted to uh, traveling back again. I think the good sign is that uh, we've seen um, small and medium enterprises to to come back uh, uh, to travel much more faster uh, in comparison to large and global enterprises. But large and global enterprises have also, uh, you know, started coming back and and started to have more dialogues with us uh, for how to how to come back and start. Uh, uh, you know, back to work and back to traveling again. So I think um, um, we do we do surely see a fair deal of comeback uh, here. I wouldn't call it vengeance, but there is a bent of demand. Uh, there is a bent of demand uh, which is which is coming back. Uh, uh, whether it's going to last for a long time or it is only momentary for a couple of months, I think only time will say. But it feels like uh, there is uh, there is time for recovery. We do, we do see almost like 80, 90 percent of our domestic business coming back, uh, uh, and uh, as as other countries open up, uh, you know, different countries open up at different time, uh, different periods. We do see international travel also coming back uh, uh, as well. So I think thanks for that, Gaurav, and fingers crossed, please, <laughs> that it continues. Yeah. yeah. And you know, uh, while Gaurav covered, you know. Uh, the key reasons, Rakshit, what according to you are the economic trends, you know, shaping up and what are some of the pitfalls that companies should be looking out uh, for? With oh, this? good God. If, if you're going to come to a travel agent for economic advice, your days are surely numbered. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, broadly, I think where we are is, uh, you know, so in, in the West, we had quite a lot of fiscal expansion. Uh, the Indian government was fairly disciplined in that regard. But a lot of that uh, fiscal um, expansion didn't, did also find its way into the Indian capital markets, either in the form of uh, private capital or uh, ex- you know um, liquidity coming into public markets. So I think what we what we you know and you you everybody it's just hard not to notice you know what people are calling a super cycle of IPOs, right? The number of IPOs that have come out in the last. Um, six months is just uh, absolutely incredible. Um, so, uh, so capital accumulation has happened, and I think we are at the start of a capex cycle. And I've always maintained, you know, twenty years of observing this industry, that uh, travel in India usually reverts to its long-term growth trend, except for when we have capex cycles kicking in, right? So when companies are feeling confident about building new factories or acquiring other companies, and so on and so, so forth, that's when we see you know, a, a, a sort of a step change um, in, in, in travel demand, right? And uh, I think that's where we we are uh, at, this, at this point in time. In terms of pitfalls, I think, look, inflationary trends are evident. Sanjay and I were talking about this before we, we kicked off this conversation. Yeah, it's a big concern. Uh, uh, and uh, also, I think uh, whilst capital, capital has accumulated that, you know, confidence to deploy is still muted. There's a it, planning, planning for capacity is hard. Um, recovery is stop, start, stop, start. The rules environment is still, you know, is prone to uncertainty, right? It's getting better, but it is prone to uncertainty. So there is a, there is a little bit of a confidence lag that, that, that follows and it's, it's easy to, to get the pacing wrong. So I think in the very long term, as economists say, everything will be okay, but in the short term, there will be adjustment. 
No, I completely agree. And uh, uh, thanks for those views, uh, Rakshit. And Sanjay, coming to you, right? Uh, enough with the gloom. Now we have something exciting. After two years, we have, uh, you know, Indian Airlines gearing up for new entrants, right? Uh, you have your Jet Airways, you have Akasa, you have all these new players, you know, eager uh, to have a go. And as a market leader, what? how do you view these entrants and, you know, what are your plans? So let me take a step back uh, from the competition, first of all. And I think okay. we all know for the last two years, there has been turmoil, not only on the aviation side of the business, but also all the related industry, economy. But what is coming out of the post-pandemic is that economy is getting very, very strong, basically on some strong fundamentals, whether you talk about the investment into infrastructure, local manufacturing, exports, and also the, some of the issues which have been caused by the geopolitical situation around the globe. I think India is getting a fair share of the, you know, the situation which is kind of rebuilding. Uh, if you look at the various economic forecasts, I mean, we are talking about uh, GDP growth about 8 to 9 percent for the next 10, 12, 20 years, which will put Indian economy to the second largest in the world by 2030. And that means that if you are going to have constant growth at that kind of size and volume, uh, it is only natural that air travel will be kind of be taking a extra boom in, into the market uh, place. So what we are thinking at Indigo, despite the fact that uh, last two years have been a tough while, uh, but next 10 years, 20 years are going to be a great you know, uh, opportunity for the air transportation uh, industry as a whole, whether it's part of the ecosystem, the traveler side, the corporate side, the agency side, hotel side, uh, car rental side. I think this is going to be a ma massive opportunity for entire ecosystem of the air travelers in the country. And it is only fair to say that uh, the kind of focus the government of India has built up on the economic development, uh, focus on the SMEs, focus in the smaller cities. We are aligning our growth objectives just in line with the overall business, uh, I mean, economic growth objectives. So uh, in the last two years, if, despite the pandemic, we have kind of launched services into, you know, tier two and tier three cities, uh, taking the advantage of the growth which are coming up that way. Uh, just to give you a small example in Pantanagar. Pantanagar is a small town in uh, Uttarakhand, uh, which is now connected uh, with the daily service from Delhi and then uh, onwards to the rest of the country. And uh, what is the industrial activity? You know, so there is a huge industrial activity which is uh, happening there. You know, And we are able to address with our growth plans, uh, all those uh, needs. So SMEs are taking a big shape right now. You know, people used to travel by railways, but now they have seen last two years' time by default. You know, by it was not by design, but it was yeah. just pandemic. There were no train services available, so a lot of people moved on to air. And those are the guys who are kind of continue to see the value in air travel. So uh, there are two or three things happening on the economic front, and the two or three things happening on the general sentiment. So this is a new segment of the market which is coming in a very very big way. Corporates are coming back now in a big. So I, I personally feel, we personally feel that, uh, you know, Indian air traveler will be only on the growth track. Today we fly about uh, eight to nine million customers on a month basis, but it is only going to go maybe double in next uh, five to seven years time. That is one side. On the competition side, I think competition is always welcome. You know, it puts uh, the existing player on the toes all the time. You know, there is a uh, better uh, you know, opportunity for the consumers to look at and to pick up the product from. Uh, I think there is a great value there. Uh, recently, Air India has been privatized. This is going to be great news for the consumers ultimately yes. and also for the competition because now we will have an airline which is controlled based on the financial prudence of the business, right, rather than, you know, political prudence of the business. So I think these are the things which will kind of uh, ultimately shape up the industry much more pro, uh, in favor of uh, the growth uh, in the next foreseeable future. Thanks for that, Sanjay. I've been touching wood. So again, fingers crossed <laughs> on this positive uh, note. Um, Anup, for you now, right? We have seen this great success, this travel recovery story of India. Uh, what are the you know, new demands that you're seeing of, from the business traveler today? Have Has anything changed? Uh, and you know, how are you all gearing up for this, for these kind of demands? So, you know, from our perspective, what we've seen over the last couple of years, uh, 
one thing which has come out to be very clear uh, over the last two years, and it is now something which is going to be more like a movement, is a big focus on sustainability from the companies. Even the RFPs today is for almost all large organizations are talking about this in a very big way. Mm-hmm. They are asking questions that they were not asking before from a sustainability point of view, which I think is very interesting. And uh, you know, thankfully for us, we started gearing up on this aspect of our business a few years back. And it's only going to go get better. And we now have targets in place that we need to achieve over the next, uh, you know, 20 years or so as an organization. Um, So we are pretty much on track on this, but uh, you will see a lot of this being talked about with almost all organizations of a certain size and scale, especially the global ones. Um, I think the other thing that we've noticed is that the travelers focus today is on a touchless experience as much as possible. Uh, You know, as, uh, we went through the cycles in the last couple of years. Uh, travelers were more comfortable with hotel chains, which were giving a touchless experience to them when they're checking in or checking out. Uh, they wanted to know what's really happening from a cleanliness hygiene point of view, very low tolerance on that level. Uh, and in fact, we put technologies in place at some of our hotels where uh, you could actually uh, you know, scan a, bar, a, a barcode, which was available, a QR code at, let's say, an elevator in, in the hotel and see when this, it was last cleaned. You know, that level of personalization happened. Uh, you know, if you go to the JW Aero City today, you can possibly still see that. So, you know, that is something the customer demand was, and we are continuing with it, uh, you know, as we go along. However, I think uh, when, when I traveled last and, you know, Rakshit and me met some time back when I was in Bombay, um, you know, some of that is going away as people become more and more comfortable overall. Uh, although we try to do whatever we can from our end, you know, uh, social distancing, mask in the hotel and all those kind of things the staff is doing it uh, but i think the customers are getting more and more comfortable you know around it and you know go, trying to go around it a bit as you go along so we'll see how it goes and to your point you know keeping our fingers crossed you know things continue yes. as they are and i uh, you know think continue to work as they are and uh, it, we see the trajectory going up even though it may be very slow overall uh, I, I think the last thing that i would say from our perspective is booking windows had become very very short which made forecasting very, very difficult for us uh, from our perspective. You know, our booking windows were as short as a week to about three to four days, which I'm sure is pretty much there with almost all airlines as well as our partners and our you know, partners like FCM as well. Uh, I think that is slowly and steadily changing as the occupancy goes up. And it also helps the hotel companies and, of course, everybody else on the call to yield their business as well in terms of which segments will make sense for them in the short, medium, and the long term. Uh, and, you know, how do you sort of balance out your overall portfolio? So I think these are four things that we've seen over a period of time. And, you know, we are very positive in terms of how things are and how things are going, going to go up. Uh, I think one of the key things that we need to be looking at is scaling up in terms of staffing across our hotels, uh, yes. which is a global phenomenon with, our, with, you know, with the hotel industry and almost all other industries as well, uh, which is, I think, a big focus for almost all organizations, including ours, ours as well. Very key insights. Gaurav, would you like to add to that anything? that you see different from what Anup has uh, mentioned? Uh, no, I think similar. Uh, just but just picking up from what Anup mentioned, uh, customers are becoming comfortable. People, travelers are becoming more and more comfortable. But there is demand for quality. Um, um, I'd like to highlight uh, just uh, uh, there is FC card proposition. That's a flight center card proposition that we have. And uh, we've seen a 200% or rather more than 200% upsurge in that compared to people booking Olas and Ubers, you know, just because these are chauffeur-driven quality, uh, personalized uh, cards with personalized proposition. So that's that's uh, something I'd like to add to indoors. Um, on the other hand, um, I'm, I have particularly noticed customers asking for hybrid, uh, uh, you know, uh, work solutions. You know, customers want, uh, many of them want SVTs, uh, self-booking uh, um, uh, self-booking uh, engines, you know, which will enable them to do things on their own quickly, faster. Uh, also, um, uh, backed up with a consultant uh, to be available for any assistance if there is any. So, hybrid is something that we are expecting. Uh, bigger upsurge. You already see a lot of demand from uh, customers coming back. Uh, on the other hand, um, one thing I'd like to add here is the travel. Uh, domestic is fairly simple, but uh, if, despite being simpler, there is a bit of complication that got added with the COVID protocols. You know, uh, like uh, um, sudden requirement by the uh, by the state governments for uh, 
uh, testing, you know, as they see the cases surging up during the uh, during the distinct, uh, uh, you know, previous versions of the um, of the COVID uh, uh, variants, uh, you know, that's added a bit to the uh, complication. You know, again, uh, on the uh, echoing a similar uh, thing like uh, what Anup mentioned, the booking windows because of that became extremely short. People didn't know when to book, or book or not to book, or book in advance. Will they will they be able to cancel? Uh, you know, all sorts of questions. Uh, on the international, uh, you know, again, lots of protocols, uh, different countries uh, reacting to the local situations on ground very differently. Uh, so um, lots of new rules, rules that would change overnight, rules that would change probably by the hours. We've had cases where uh, um, customers have firmed up their travels, they've, gone their, they've done their testing, they've followed the rules. And then you know, just before they board the flight, we've come to know that the rules on the grounds have changed and you know we rushed back and advised those customers. So it's become very, very complicated. Um, uh, to, to some extent, it was uh, it had been very difficult even for our consultants to keep a tab of uh, all the changing rules across the world. Uh, you know, so the, definitely there is a lot of uh, uh, demand and expectations from customers uh, from a company like ours to come back and support uh, and guide the. Uh, uh, guide our customers, you know, for, uh, you know, to follow the right protocols. Um, I think that's one big, uh, big change that I've uh, I've observed. Uh, apart from that, I think uh, fingers crossed is like what you mentioned. So, so I'm hearing very interesting things, right? We are saying we were high touch, we may be low touch. We don't know. Yeah. We are going to be high touch or low touch in future. Yeah. Uh, people want people. People also want tech. Uh, you know, we 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 are still. It's a very fluid situation. And uh, so we heard from the hotelier, we heard from the TMC. Uh, Sanjay, from the airline perspective, uh, anything interesting besides, uh, you know, what they have already covered on what are business travelers looking for? Yeah, so I think there are a few things which are happening around us. Obviously, with the resumption of the flight uh, after the first wave and then subsequently after the second wave, the customers are becoming very quality conscious. And this is the fact which is now reflected all across, whether you talk about the airline, the hotels, and the car rental, Garo touched upon car rental, and Manu touched upon the hotel side. And the same thing is equivalent very much in our kind of business. The customers are now you know, willing to pay something extra for the quality and the assurance which they get, reliability and on time was always a you know, preferred route for their selection of the flights. But now added to that is the quality and the hygiene and the overall experience, which is kind of playing a big role. And the second most important thing is the touchless travels. Some of the things which have now changed are what, uh, you know, designed to be changed by the instructions from the MOCA guideline from the Ministry of Civil Aviation. But now it has become a part of life. You know, people who are traveling regularly and who are traveling uh, from the large corporations and uh, traveling in the company's budget, they are now seeking to get something more than the used. So they are now picking up products which are ancillary product, uh, like we call it ancillary product, but it's like a value add. Uh, so they are now picking up fast forward. That's a new service which become very popular. People don't want to go to the check-in line and uh, you know just want to face no customer agent and just want to board the flight. So this is a new way of expectation. So customers are picking up fast forward. Customers are uh, picking up uh, quick boarding. Uh, that is a new product we have launched in the last uh, two years. Uh, customers are now looking for uh, faster baggage delivery in case they are carrying the baggage. And at the time of boarding, they just want to kind of go to the boarding gate straight and not be in the queue and just get onto the plane. So these are the kind of things which customers are now looking for. And I think they will continue to pay extra and then uh, avail all these add-on services, which not only gives them the confidence of flying uh, you know, in, a, in a safe and uh, secure environment, but also gives them a somewhat touchless travel. I mean, they don't want to kind of come in touch with the, on a queue or a, you know, a lot of other uh, interactions with the customers. I mean, uh, airline staff, they just want to kind of move quickly. And uh, now one more product which we kind of have launched is uh, keep my next seat empty on the plane. 
So, for example, that has become all of a sudden very popular among the corporate travelers. You know, if I'm sitting on one alpha, I want Bravo seat to be empty, and I'm willing to pay. My corporate is willing to pay extra money for that, and that is product. I think is becoming very popular. We have seen uh, quite a good traction on board that kind of requirement in last uh, two years time, and now, especially in the month of March and April, we have seen a huge rebound of the corporate travelers. So, just to kind of uh, get back to the point, uh, Gara and uh, Anup were making uh, on the recovery side. I mean, this morning I was looking at my numbers for the month of, you know, March and April uh, till 19th. Of April. I think we have seen almost 98% recovery from all the corporates of the traveling on the EU network as compared to the January of 2020. Okay, that is one thing. The only thing which is lagging behind right now is a couple of. Segments of the market, which is IT consulting, which is still hovering around 70, 75 percent of the recovery. So what we see is there is a slow recovery on the consulting and the IT side of the uh, business, but rest of the industries have shown a significant improvement in the last one and a half year, and they kind of some of the industries have actually gone ahead uh, and uh, surpassed the number which they were doing uh, in January 2020 prior to the pandemic. So we are seeing a new trend. Uh, of the demand which is coming for the product, which are exclusive, which can give them exclusivity, which can give them uh, you know, touchless travel. So I think that is what we are focusing on in terms of building up that experience for the consumers. No, very well put, Sanjay. And you know, it ties up all the three, the points that you'll put, which is uh, possibly because of COVID, India is moving from a very, very price conscious to a value conscious market, right? The travelers far more discerning. I got upsold a priority uh, you know, baggage recently, 500 rupees with something I've never would have done earlier. Uh, but it seemed worth, you know, when someone put it across. So I think it's, uh, uh, you know, music to all of our ears. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, we didn't need COVID, of course, but I guess that's one of the positive sides uh, to what we've been through in this last two years. Right. And Rakesh, something very interesting for you, right? You are a computer engineer, so this question is obviously for you. Um, you know, a lot of innovation in the last two years and people are talking about digitization and technology as, you know, people here also said uh, more of a touchless experience. Uh, you know, what do you think are the new trends which are here to stay and, you know, to deepen customer experience, uh, according to you? You know, first of all, Thank FCM for inviting me to for this panel discussion. Yes. And yes, you know, digitization has really been at the forefront since the last two years, more since the pandemic, you know. There have been many new initiatives. If you look on the digitization front, digital IDs, you know, digital passports, digital security, biometrics. Yes. You know, we're talking, uh, uh, I mentioned about high touch and low touch travel, and it's really you know, touchless or contactless travel which is really, you know, really gaining traction and they are the trending words now. But on what is here to stay and, you know, how, how, how you know, how, how does it deepen customer experience? Most of these new trends or new, these new innovations are going to be very, very relevant. But maybe I would like to mention here about NDC, which is, you know, one of the important ones also. NDC, if you say, is playing a significant role and it is you know, taking digital travel detailing to a whole new level. For years now, there have been conversations in the travel industry around how NDC would transform digital detailing. What does innovation in digital detailing even look like for the travel industry? How can travel detailing be made easy, personalized, rewarding, maybe something similar to what Netflix was for the film and TV industry or what Amazon was for the books? That's something what MDS and industry partners have been exploring for a while now. And this is an open innovation technology field, you know. It's enabling the industry to anticipate traveler needs to serve them better. MDS itself is pioneering several technological breakthroughs on MDC. Last year, during the pandemic, you know, almost 18 to 24 months, marked a significant milestone in the industry, you know, towards the NDC journey. It was the year that NDC really took off, came to scale up, and is taking digital travel retailing to the next level now. But are corporations ready to reap the benefits of this digitization? As often with change, there are mixed reactions. But for those who prefer to wait and see, there is a risk of getting left behind. For corporations, 
the times to start thinking about how to innovate with NDC is now. NDC benefits everyone throughout the travel supply chain. It enables airlines to tailor their offer to best suit the needs of traveler or corporation. And we have seen how Sanjay mentioned and you know, Gaurav also hinted how the needs and demands of customers are changing now in terms of you know, what they demand from the airlines or from the hotels. This also means that airlines and hotels can better and more efficiently serve corporations and business travelers who might have special requests around luggage, food options, Wi-Fi, a range of other light up services, for example. You know, Alok mentioned, you know, the booking window has really reduced down to two or three days. And that has its own challenges in terms of allocation, in terms of planning, you know. So, you know, technology and services like, you know, uh, interfaces like NDC are allowing providers to be able to do and to customize their offers. With NDC, travel agents and travel managers can gain access to a wider range of rich content, which they can then offer to their clients. This builds a deeper relationship with the airlines as it opens up the door to negotiate with them in a way that's more relevant to their travel programs. At Amadeus, we continue to work closely with our partners to make sure that NDC addresses the needs of all stakeholders. In the new world of digitization, boundaries between business and leisure travel are becoming increasingly blurred. Open platforms and digital security powered by technology are becoming a vital tool in the journey. Amadeus is fully committed to innovation using cutting edge technology to meet the industry's need for flexibility, agility, and better servicing. In fact, Amadeus powered travel agencies are already managing such complexity and are offering better service to their partners by managing NDC bookings, both through Amadeus Selling Platform Connect, as well as through the Amadeus Web Services interface for, you know, and you know, Gaurav was mentioning about self-booking tools gaining importance. So technologies and the interfaces like Amadeus Web Services even allow TMCs to offer NDC content on the self-booking tool and their portals. So this is this is something, you know, really which our trends will stand out. I guess, you know, all of them will be relevant and, you know, it will depend upon uh, individual TMC and to the needs and requirements of that specific corporation that which particular of this digitization trends or functionalities or tools and applications will be, you know, more used. But I, but I guess most of these evolving innovations and digitization trends are in for, 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 a, for a great future ahead. Absolutely. Thank you. And, you know, very glad that you brought up NDC. That's the new word in the industry. And uh, if you're aware, Flight Center also made a very strategic investment uh, at a global level. So that's, you know, where we are also looking uh, forward to. Um, Anup, since, you know, Rakesh largely covered a uh, large part of it, from the hotel perspective, hotel industry, do you see any uh, similar things in terms of digitization and technology trends that are here to stay? So, you know, just adding on to what Rakesh mentioned, uh, of course, we are also building our infrastructure to be ready for the future where a higher level of customization is going to happen from our customer experience point of view, uh, which basically means, you know, building a complete infrastructure. So Marriott is currently in the process of investing a fair bit of uh, dollars into the technology, which is going to power this in the future, uh, where, you know, it'll be customized to a very large extent for the customer. They can make a choice in terms of what they are looking for as a consumer. You know, in fact, looking at a specific hotel uh, room, a specific type of room, uh, you know, in terms of specific view of a room, those are things that we are really getting into in a very, very um, significant way as an organization. And uh, to Rakesh's point, you know, the focus is towards uh, more customization. And of course, to your point, you know, adding value. Uh, people are willing to, you know, pay for the value, and that's where we think the next uh, next big thing is going to happen, as far as the industry is concerned. And we are right at the forefront of it. Um, on the other side, I would say that what the uh, pandemic has actually taught us to be, of course, extremely nimble and agile. Yes. Uh, you know, we've had some amazing new business opportunity which have come our way, which was never even a thought process in 2019 yes. or early 2020. For example. Marriott Bonvoy on Wheels, which is something, you know, we believe that people should be coming to our hotels and having a meal, but nobody ever thought that the customer is going to actually ask for a meal at their house. So, you know, how do you customize that 
experience for the consumer where he gets the same taste and you know the for keeping in view all the cleanliness aspects and the delivery aspects to get food at home while he was cooped up at home and you know there was they were not able to move out to different places and that's actually been a very very big opportunity for us and it is going to be one of our key lines of business in the coming future looking at the revenue that we've been able to generate during that particular time uh, which i think is really fantastic the other very interesting business segment which came out was staycations uh, which is something which was fascinating for us as an organization a person for example staying in gurgaon uh, you know going and staying at a hotel in gurgaon uh, with family or friends unheard of in the past right so this is a new line of business that we and we hope it continues as we go along you know because it's uh, obviously as business picks up some of that will sort of taper off uh, but we hope it continues because it uh, sort of gives a different view for to a person that they don't need to call people at home they would rather go to a hotel as a group of friends and you know, spend some time with family and friends uh, with no uh, not having any kind of tension at home that you know we need to cook for our people or whatever i think a great line of business that we see um and of course uh, when we look at uh, you know our business per se i think one of the biggest uh, thing that is a uh, positive if i may put it that way is that we've had a lot of conversations on you know a building a pipeline of new hotels coming in uh, where people have actually come to us who are probably talking to other partners or looking at independent hotels and they believe that you know the strength of the marriott or you know other global companies right. is really going to help them to drive business because they've seen the results of that uh, during the pandemic time uh which i think and of course we see a lot of conversions are also happening uh, in the near future with a lot of existing hotels converting into uh, you know marriott products across the world uh, so i think these are the positives if i may look at it from you know what has really happened from the pandemic so as i say there's always a silver lining to whatever happens and hopefully yes. it sustains as we go along yes and i also got sold a staycation by the way something oh, i never thought i would do <laughs> So yes, uh, these things are, are here, and I'm definitely will be looking at that again in the future. It, it just made a very interesting price point uh, for us for a family holiday. Uh, Rakesh, back to you with a very interesting one, right? Again, a new buzzword: uh, the metaverse. You know, now you have people investing in VR and AR, and you know, do you ever think people are going to in future plan for you know VR meetings across? So. business traveler he goes you know he or she goes to sell uh, you know have those client visits do you do you see uh, you know this being substituted the whole physical experience being substituted by this new technology well you know you, you talked about virtual reality and you know this technology is you know what 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 it can do actually being able to deploy the right technology is is really you know the key to success in the marketplace today yeah and the technology is really changing the rules of the game if if you look at you know last two years one may think about slow down and uh, slow down and dakshit earlier mentioned you know economy is going down and how it affect and then gaurav mentioned about you know march how everybody is surprised with the upsurge and things are looking good but actually these last two years if you look to you know really have been game changers especially on terms of technology they have kick start and you know unprecedented innovations in the travel industry let's let's explore this metaverse you know a parallel universe of virtual reality as, as you, you mentioned about metaverse and what it can do now think about the xbox think about the virtual reality it's such a rich immersive experience a world where the real and virtual seamlessly unite some time ago it was difficult to imagine you know how the virtual reality could redefine the travel experience but here we are you know augmented reality virtual reality extended reality as you know they club all the fields of reality together now is really the next level of revolution travel was always meant to be an immersive experience you know technology companies started creating virtual tours with very rich content it it enabled them to bring to life spaces services dining experiences and you know many more choices to a traveler even before he could click on book now so earlier you know he really had to go through the option select something and then experience now he has all these options available to him before he can decide you know when to book or what to book the tools and applications now being built which are incorporated this augmented and virtual reality and they are expected to play an important role in enhancing the travel experience they will inspire travelers to take well researched journeys 
while at the same time you know helping tmcs contribute towards their brand building and offering a superior overall experience it's a whole new phase of marketing and sales you know anupam was already mentioning you know how, how how it helps the economy and how it can grow the revenues and you know what works but but you know this this is one big area you know when we talk of thinking about revenue and you know what it can do to you amidis is investing heavily in research and development and these technologies are very very interesting for us in fact the amidis we are at experience is a custom tour of a place that exists in reality all one needs is a headset an app or an web to really experience virtual reality anytime anywhere and on the other side of the spectrum you know as you just extend into technology it's the vre the virtual reality i it's a new recording technology that guarantees the highest level in terms of quality of engagement and at the same time providing freedom of movement you know with 360 degree views and you know 360 degree recordings and you know all of those filtering out metaverse will definitely have a big impact on the travel industry i think it's going to change the way people travel in fact if you see vr travel advertising is already gaining traction it's as easy as plug and play even before you arrive at a destination you can virtually explore experience and even choose from the various options available dmcs would use this technology to market and sell in the best possible way there is a huge big opportunity and again think revenue it's it's really a whole new elevated experience for both travelers as well as the sellers it aids in brand building and it facilitates a very very premium travel experience well it's real and we are super excited to explore this new space yeah, and i caught the keyword there revenue Uh, I'm sure all of us did. So very interesting, Rakesh. And also me as a person, I would say I would love if I go to the beach, I need to feel the sand and the you know, um, you know, eyes burning with the salty water. But I guess there are people who who have physical challenges or limitations. This would be something super for them, right? I mean, I believe there's a then market for everybody. You know, the the things that we are all thinking about. You know, what is the user going to like in future? i think there is something for everybody and you know uh, i think hyper personalization and you know high level of customization i think uh, brilliant brilliant points raised uh, maybe i will just you know go through the room for some rakshit you wanted to say something before yeah i i, I was going to say we you know you, you should be careful what you wish for because the one thing i can guarantee knowing sanjay is that even in the metaverse metaverse indigo flights will be sold out <laughs> <laughs> Uh, i think uh, there's just so much of the population coming up right from you were just creating new new markets for everything it's uh, i don't know very exciting times ahead and i'll just go through the room for some you know parting thoughts uh, maybe we'll begin with you rakesh what is what are your parting thoughts for the audience where india is rebuilding its you know corporate travel well we know technology and innovation will be powerful enablers of change i would say rather even disruptors to the traditional established way of working you know we at amidis are committed to working together with our partners tmcs corporate travelers corporations you know across the industry to really rethink travel to rebuild travel and to reignite customer confidence in today's world creating a smart and connected corporate travel ecosystem is the way to go yeah innovations powered by technology cutting edge technologies like you know we discuss some of them we it on the extended reality side or the digital ids or the online security or the contactless travel which are delivering end to end integration and solutions with the ease of use scalability market reach performance 24 by 7 support you know all the ingredients for the end to end integration and service they really will be the key to success in the digital marketplace thank you uh, gorav your thoughts for the audience yeah i think i will resonate with what uh, rakesh pension i have first of all uh, he covered uh, the ar and vr question very beautifully well i think uh, very well explained uh, rakesh thank you thank you for that uh, parting thoughts for me um cutting edge technology uh, is ease of use for uh, the travelers for the users uh, coupled with uh, great 
uh, human high touch uh, service is the way to go i think uh, uh, they uh, nothing can substitute uh, what the real human can bring on the table as an experience but uh, using technology to augment that experience is uh, need of the hour uh, also um, building the gaps between the leisure and the business travel leisure is the the concept that uh, we should we should keep a bit of focus and bring in uh, uh, with the likes of new technologies for example the ndcs of the world or uh, other open possibilities bring in the marketplace uh, you know you bring in more choice to your customers that will be more important uh, in the time to in the time to come thank you gaurav anup your thoughts so i will just echo what rakesh and gaurav said i think uh, the future looks like inter it it possibly is more towards customization um and you know adding more value uh, and of course you know the customer willing to pay a price for that value that they are getting i think that's where the routing is going to be uh, as you go along and i'm sure the technology uh, which rakesh and team are building and you know what fcm is working uh, you know i'm sure you will be able to you know give those solutions to the customers uh, you know adding value to the overall chain um otherwise i think we remain pretty optimistic about our business uh, you know as we've all talked on uh, a little while back um you know the encouraging part for us is that we are almost crossing our 2019 levels uh, in this month which is really really exciting uh, hopefully uh, you know it stays the course and uh, we are able to drive uh, business as we go along and it has a steady trajectory which you know which is upwards over the next few months so that you know everything stabilizes and we are able to build on that Uh, at least for all our organizations put together uh, but it is a very exciting time ahead uh, i think what it, what the pandemic has taught us is to stay strong uh, and not to lean on each other for support and more importantly to stay very nimble uh, because you need to look at opportunities as they come and be adaptable to the changes that come your way and i'm sure that's what the last two years have taught us and we will all i'm sure be staying the course as we go along on this one oh brilliant thank you sanjay so i think uh, while echoing uh, whatever has been already said i just kind of want to mention that uh, corporate travel will continue to flourish and then uh, we at indigo will continue to build up our network and product and uh, you know selling strategies around uh, the meeting the requirement of a new set of consumers new set of travelers and also more importantly consumer will also be now picking up uh, quality versus Uh, price so i think there will be clear distinction now uh, which will kind of unfold over uh, next foreseeable future uh, with the growth of the industry and the growth of the business the consumer who are more kind of uh, focus on the quality side they will be willing to kind of uh, pay something extra to the airline i think that is one clear trend which is emerging and we at indigo have a massive uh, you know uh, order book in place we will continue to build up our domestic as well as the international network as we speak today we are operating about 1750 flights daily uh, which is much more than what we operated just before the lockdown first lockdown which happened so which which means that we are we are uh, even higher than our pre covid level of uh, flight operations so we continue to build up this massive transportation network across the country and as long as india economy story you know stay intact I think we see a huge potential opportunity for all of us in the marketplace. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. And I think you know, customer willing to pay largely. I also think you know, across I've been meeting our customers across uh, India now. I think largely they are more understanding and appreciative of us, right? On the value we drive from the consultancy aspect, right? And how we help them enable their businesses, right? End of the day, we are just enablers. and i think largely the willingness to pay has come from you know the they also feel for us you know for these two years and they and they realize that we also need to invest to give them much more uh, value so i think uh, i think brilliant to put all for a few dakshit yeah i'm very optimistic yeah. i think uh, you know uh, the the pundits who called the demise of corporate travel or said that corporate <laughs> travel might never get back to its historic levels because uh, 
uh, they, you know, because of telecommuting or whatever it is, I think those claims were vastly exaggerated, right? And I think even the the, the smartest people on the planet were talking about uh, full recovery by FY24 or 25. But if you ask Gaurav, he will tell you that, you know, between March and April, from our, our business point of view, we seem to be there already, right? So yes. I think I'm, I'm very optimistic. And I said, I, like I said, I think it will coincide with a, with a CapEx cycle uh, in India. So our problem is going to be coping. Our, uh, our problem is not going to be demand-led. It's going to be supply-led. So fingers crossed. Yes. I think fingers crossed is a mantra. Uh, that our main takeaway from today. Uh, thank you, all of you, uh, you know, well within time and brilliant, brilliant uh, discussion. And thank you for sharing your thoughts so candidly and openly. And we look forward to meeting in person the next time. I know we couldn't all meet in one city. It was a nightmare to coordinate schedules. Uh, but hopefully, you know, as we know now, this this way of uh, work is also there to stay, right? Uh, I'm sure I'm sure Anup will host a staycation for us. Yes. Done. Absolutely. Tell me when, Rakshit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. And wishing you a great day ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you